This is a graduate level course for students in environmental science, but also in other disciplines and professionals who are interested in the uh, ideas and methods and actually the analysis of geospatial data. And uh, so I'm going to, in this brief mini lecture, just introduce the uh, course a little bit, the talk about some of the structure of the course. Uh, and mention the uh, five main areas of geomatics that uh, we focus on. Very broad definition of science methods and applications of geospatial information suggests this, you know, really expanding field because uh, in many areas geospatial suggests other kinds of uh, applications that are possible. And so uh, anywhere there's data that is locational specific or has a an important aspect of its uh, attributes or its location uh, in essence that becomes an application of geomatics um, the idea of geomatics is really well geomatics is a made-up word that uh, was essentially coined in the uh, early 90s to try to capture the notion of of the uh, the technology and the applications or the uh, the ways in which that technology were being applied. And so uh, it's not a word that is used uh, globally, but uh, there are geomatics, uh, there are departments of geomatics in universities and in governments, and, and it's a word that I think is, has increasing uh, attraction because it's uh, ability to sort of capture the notion of uh, locational information and its importance in uh, a wide range of applications. We talk about five areas of geomatics in this course and uh, those are listed here. We emphasize really the remote sensing and digital elevation modeling and uh, spatial modeling uh, and the others are introduced but the uh, main focus on the course is to allow students to use remote sensing information, GIS information, GPS information from a GNSS, the American GPS, the elevation modeling information, and uh, to create spatial models, and those often uh, take an output form in the form of a map. So we do look at the acquisition, the handling of the different types of data, and also the quantitative analysis of it. Uh, this course is Geomatics 1, and uh, there is a second course that uh, is uh, available. It's called Geomatics 2, and it's uh, really focused on the notion of the do-it-yourself geo-apps or geo-applications geo that you can build uh, an app, mobile, essentially uh, small, lightweight, obviously uh, strong functionality designed for a particular reason, and that's uh, the focus of the second course. The learning outcomes for this course uh, very broadly are to make sure that students are interested, are, become familiar with the theory and the practical fundamentals of geomatics, particularly in environmental research, monitoring and assessment. Uh, but I think as you'll notice throughout the course, but uh, uh, just generally speaking, the spatial data, geospatial data have applications in a wide range of different applications, not just in environment, but of course that's one of the, the main areas and we focus on that here. Uh, we want people to have some problem-solving experience with remote sensing and, and uh, vector and raster data in a GIS with elevation models and in the end, as I mentioned, we want to have this uh, output which is often in the form of a spatial model shown across uh, with a distribution which would essentially be a map or a series of maps. We do have this notion of technical competence with uh, software, which I think uh, should be uh, highlighted as one of the learning objectives, but we don't provide the kind of hand uh, holding or the step-by-step -step instructions that uh, I think you might have encountered in some of your undergraduate courses or, or perhaps elsewhere in tutorials and in uh, other courses at this level. Uh, the reason is that we want people to focus on the problem-solving skills and not to become bogged down in the technical details. So we're not providing technical instruction. Uh, there are technical supports throughout the course, uh, as you would expect, 
uh, but we want people to develop those skills themselves and we feel that the most appropriate way for people to do that is to solve problems and we're not going to dictate how those problems need to be solved but they will be solved with uh, some of the software tools that we'll provide and they may be solved with software tools that you yourself will develop or uh, perhaps uh, bring to the course yourself. And finally we want, uh, because there is this notion of uh, critical thinking and uh, familiarity with the literature, we want students to feel comfortable with reviews and presentations and the communications of geomatics. And so uh, in the course there are uh, different components. We have a very extensive ebook that we've produced uh, that follows the lecture uh, series and we have uh, slide presentations on most of the sections that are in the ebook uh, and many lectures that accompany most of those slide presentations. Uh, there are also two lab assignments and those are evaluated and so there are deliverables for each of the two labs. Uh, and there is uh, really the, the culmination, if you will, of the course is the uh, major student projects. Throughout the course, we'll evaluate students and their participation and we'll encourage discussion forum and discussion boards and other mechanisms. We'll have open sessions with the uh, intention of uh, dealing with questions that you might have and we'll also have some peer-to-peer -peer interactions that we will encourage. The ebook and the presentations uh, do come with a table of contents, which is uh, essentially presented here and is also in the ebook. Uh, and you'll see that uh, the first uh, of five modules is essentially an introduction to geomatics, the overview of all of the different aspects, the structure of the course, the student projects, which I'll talk about in, in the next uh, mini lecture, uh, but essentially introducing the five main areas. We have a CAN data set that we've produced that has the uh, uh, main focus on Peterborough and that is the uh, obviously where the course development has occurred. Uh, we do encourage and want, as I'll uh, highlight uh, later and throughout the course, students to use data sets that they themselves have compiled, not only this uh, Peterborough data set. Uh, the four main software tools that will be introduced and highlighted are ArcGIS, PCI Geomatica, QGIS, and SAGA, which is uh, the last two are freeware packages that uh, you may already be familiar with, but you'll find that uh, they have a great deal of functionality and they are, uh, the other, the ArcGIS and PCI Geomatica are licensed through Trent University and you have access to those through this course. The second module uh, introduces the principles of remote sensing. Uh, beginning with uh, some basic uh, geophysics with electromagnetic spectrum and uh, going stepping through a, a number of topics uh, before we introduce different types of platforms, the satellites, uh, air, aircraft, uh, manned aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles. The uh, third module is uh, focused on elevation models and we have uh, a number of uh, very specific applications that are introduced later including automated landform classification, but uh, the use of elevation models is fairly ubiquitous and is uh, one of the, the main areas for uh, integration of raster and vector data. Uh, the last two modules are uh, rather more advanced in the sense that lab, or that uh, module four is a uh, lab-based module where uh, some functionality is introduced for uh, R and using different types of scripting tools and uh, students are encouraged uh, at that time to have essentially uh, moved beyond the canned Peterborough data set for their uh, major projects. And the last uh, module, module 5, introduces some advanced analysis topics in particular machine learning algorithms and also uh, making sure that students are completely comfortable with the notion of autocorrelation. The development team, a uh, number of individuals, uh, many of whom you'll see in the uh, subsequent mini lectures, uh, all focused at Trent University in uh, 2017, uh, with uh, the CREATE program, the NSERC CREATE program being the funding mechanism that brought us together to provide this instruction. Um, 
The last thing I wanted to mention about the course was the uh, reason many of you, and I'm sure uh, others are, are uh, coming to this particular area through this notion of career development. And uh, I just wanted to highlight the growing and expanding uh, field of geospatial or geomatics um, careers. And this is a publication uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, there is a uh, fairly regular set of publications that come from the Canadian Institute of Geomatics, the CIG. Uh, this one focuses, uh, it's from Natural Resource Canada, but it focuses on the, uh, uh, the value-added industry, geomatics industry, which uh, is comprised of a fair number of uh, individual firms, many of whom are quite small and uh, are spread out across the country, but they do generate a considerable uh, GDP, so a contribution of GDP, so up to 1% uh, of the GDP and perhaps 19,000 jobs. And it is part of a larger, I think, still expanding world of enviromatics or enviroinfomatics and uh, sort of big data or uh, different uh, labels are used to identify really that intersection between computer science and applications fields like environment or, or medicine or, or other areas. And so uh, enviromatics is certainly uh, an increasingly demanding and also an increasingly uh, um, important area of the, uh, both the economy and certainly in the way in which we solve environmental problems.